Welcome to Understand. This is Jordan with Scientific Toolworks. Graphs represent the ultimate abstraction of code, being able to visualize your entire project or zoom in on a specific piece of it in just a glance. They can also be a useful tool for summarizing the relationship around an entity or making your case to management. Understand has many different graphs, and each of these graphs has several different variants. In this video, we'll be generating some of those graphs in Understand. Again, this is not meant to be an exhaustive list by any means, but rather a simple demonstration of some of the most popular graphs that Understand offers. Here we have a sample C++ project to start with. Let's say my boss is interested in a particularly problematic function called Chimera, and wants me to generate four different graphs that can illustrate how and where this function is being used. So first off, we can access any graph by right-clicking the entity we're interested in from almost any window and selecting Graphical Views. This will bring up an entity-dependent list of available graphs. So let's go to Chimera and pull up a call graph to start. Call graphs are specific to functions and methods and do exactly what it sounds like. They show the functions and methods that the root one calls. So once we have our starting call graph, if we go to the top right of the graph window, there will be a dropdown of available variants. You can see that call graphs default to the simplified variant, but there are several others to choose from. For instance, let's try the variant with global objects. Okay, this one may be a bit too complicated to tell my boss anything useful, so I'm going to change it back to the simplified variant. Something to note here is that global objects will have an oval border, as you saw in the last variant, and unresolved objects will have a dotted line border, like printf. Okay, so now we have our simple call graph, but there are a few changes I want to make to this. To customize the graph, we simply have to right-click inside the graph window to pull up the context menu. You can see here that the graph already displays parameters and unresolved functions. So I'll turn these off for an example. But personally, I like these options, so I'm going to keep them toggled on. Turn those back on. Okay, let's say I also want to see any comments associated with these functions. So let's turn that option on. Okay, great. Let's say I also want to see the most recent annotation to these functions. So let's turn that option on as well. Here, if we go to annotations, you have the option to see all annotations or just the most recent one. Okay, now we have a call graph that I'm happy to show my boss. Now, let's make a butterfly graph for our next one. Butterfly graphs show the most important relationships for the kind of entity you select. For functions and methods, it shows both the call and called by trees. However, for a class, it will show you the inheritance tree, and for files, it will show you the include tree. You can think of these as smart graphs that show what's both behind and in front of your entity. So if we right-click Chimera again and pull up a butterfly graph, graphical views, butterfly. Let's lower this window a bit. Okay, we can see here again that the simplified variant is the default variant for butterfly graphs. So let's turn the unresolved entities off for this one. Okay, that's a little bit cleaner, but let's increase the calls depth to four. So if we go to calls depth, it defaults to three, but if we put four, now the call depth is four. Okay, this one's ready to go as well. So for our next graph, I really want to show my boss the flow of logic happening within Chimera. Luckily, this is exactly what is achieved with a control flow graph, so let's use that. This time we'll access the graph a different way, from the top level menu under graphs. And we'll go to graphs for Chimera, and we'll go over to control flow. As you can see, we can instantly visualize the logical flow through this function, seeing exactly where branches and decisions lead to. This graph is fairly large, so one way to easily navigate around it is the mini-map in the top left corner of the graphs window. Simply click and drag around the map to move to the relative spot in the graph window. Note that this mini-map is available for all graphs, not just this one. Okay, so I think this graph is already ready to go. 
Let's generate our last graph, a UML sequence diagram. So let's right-click Chimera again, Graphical Views, and UML Sequence Diagram. UML Sequence Diagrams are interaction diagrams that detail how operations are carried out. They capture the data flow and timing for member objects to give you a better context of their usage. Keep in mind, I can click on these functions in the graph to pull them up in the previewer. So if I click on Submatch, it'll populate the previewer down here. All right, so now we have four simple and informative graphs for me to send to my boss. Now what? Well, there's a handful of ways we can share them. In the top right menu of the graph window, we can either copy the graph to our clipboard to later paste somewhere with this button here. There's also an option to print the graph where we can also save it to a PDF file with this button here. And lastly, we can save our graph to an image file, selecting where we'd like to save it and our preferred extension with this button here. Well, this was a short overview of graphs and understand. Hopefully it's apparent how powerful yet simple this tool is, and I encourage you to go play with graphs on your own. There are hundreds of options to choose from. In this video, we covered just some of the most common graphs and graph uses, as well as some of the ways we could configure and customize these graphs. For more information on graphs and understand, visit support.sidetools.com.